You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Hello and welcome to Living Full Out Show. My name is Nancy Soleri. So excited to be here with you today. Today, we're going to be talking about finding your purpose. Now, For some people, they know that at an early age. I mean, that is so great for them because maybe they stumble upon it. Maybe they have great mentors or parents that show them that guidance along the way. But I don't know about you, but for many of us, we kind of have to fumble through life and figure out what are we good at and what are we meant to do and be in the world. And, And I'm raising both hands because that has been my experience. And it's okay if you're still looking for your purpose because... That is what we're talking about today, and we are always here for you, even outside the show, uh, to give you that support. Now, feel free to call in. That number is 800-333-0001, and if you want to hear today's show again, many of you know, but if you don't, you can go to your iPhone, uh, your Android, whatever it is, go to the App Store, look for Living Full Out Radio, or if you have an Alexa, you can look for Living Full Out Radio there in your skills. And um, basically, we are on 24-7. Or you can go to livingfullout.com, go to our website. All of our episodes are there, and they're all labeled by various subjects and topics. So you just want to find the one that resonates with what you are going through. And most of all, make sure you stay with us because we're going to be joined by Lori Marini in our next segment. And she's going to be talking about her battle with breast cancer, but yet the really difficult decisions that she had to make along the way but it all really came out for the greater good because it helped her find her purpose. She she loved her career early on in her life, but wow, she's making amazing strides today and breast cancers to be thanked for that because it gave her that focus, that new desire. So I want to make sure that over the course of today that you always remember that the Living Full Out community is a safe place. If you're, you know, upset, if you're sad, if you're frustrated, I'm here. Okay, because we've all been there and sometimes we need that outlet. I know friends and family are great, but sometimes they might say, oh, I've heard this before. Well, I am fresh meat. Come to me. Okay, and I will promise to help you in the best way I can. Now, I'm getting word for a producer that we do have a listener on the line. We're going to go say hello to them. Hi, welcome to Living Full Out Show. Hi, Nancy. It's Elaine calling. Hi, Elaine. Nice talking to you. How can I help you today? Well, I hope that you can give me some advice. Um, I am a very active senior who's recently moved from the north to the south, and I'm having a lot of difficulty in meeting new people and establishing new friendships. I've tried pursuing my interests, and I've tried joining clubs and participating in recreational activities but I'm still having difficulty. So what do I do now? Well, and I'm curious, Elaine, is because you're, because you're obviously doing it, right? You're getting out there. And these are unique times right now, I realize that we're in. So physically getting places sometimes is even tricky. But what is your, what is your um, networking like? Um, When you go and you meet somebody for the first time, let's say you go play cards or you go to a some sort of a social group, do you actively in the back of your mind say, okay, I want to leave today with one new friend. I don't have to be friends with everybody, but one new friend. And I'm going to intentionally exchange numbers with that new friend. Do you do that? Yes. Well, (laughs) I have tried. I have tried. And many times I'm the one that reaches out Mm -hmm. and, um, it's kind of like a su- superficial relationship. Yep. Uh, I have I have some very very dear friends here that I met through a recreational activity and mm-hmm. through taking a class, and um, and it was the other person that reached out and called me, and we have become very very dear friends. So I have tried, you know, exchanging numbers, but uh, 
the problem here is that many people are a distance away from me. Many people I would like to be friend with, friends with are at least like 45 minutes away from me, an hour away from me. So it's difficult to call up and say, how would you, how would you like to have dinner tonight? Uh, whereas when, where I lived in the north, uh, everyone was in about five, five minutes of each other. So, oh, okay. Yes, I, I, I have tried. Yes, go ahead. I I'm definitely, sorry. now I get it completely. And I, as a visually impaired woman, I can't jump in my car and run over to people's houses either. So I get it. it, it sometimes it, when distance is far or the ability to jump in a car and get somewhere with ease is not there, it can be tricky. Um, so you want to use to your disposal what is best. So if you can meet with someone in person, obviously that's the best, a handshake, a hug, a, a, you know, the body language of it all. But I would really embrace more the phone if you're tech savvy, FaceTiming, um, because a lot of enriching relationships can be done that way. And that's true for friendships, that's true for dating, but it's all about kind of finding that hook. And when I say a hook, it's finding something where you can ha develop a bond. It might be music interest. It might be places that you've traveled together. It might be if you have kids in common. It might be pets in common. you got to find something, and that's only going to happen over the course of many conversations. Maybe even bringing a joke to the table or, you know, having a story <laughs> on hand. And also, you know, it's interesting. My mom is one of my best friends. But when her husband passed away, this was many years ago, she had been in a circle of all couples. And they had just moved to the Palm Springs area. And that's all they knew were couples. But then she quickly became a single. And she had to go out there and kind of connect with other singles. And she, sat, she started finding like bachelor groups where people were getting together every Monday night to watch The Bachelor. Or she went to a site called meetup.com, and I'm sure there's that in your local area, uh, but meetup.com is a, is a way that you can meet other people. And she, uh, she joined a card group. She joined a wine group. Um, and then, of course, depending on what community you live in, if there's a clubhouse, if there's any social aspect to that. And also, sometimes it's just putting yourself out there first making some sort of a little get together or party. Maybe it's inviting your four friends, even though they're kind of far away, invite four people. And you know what? Everyone bring one person, right? And make it kind of a social event where they're at your turf and and you're able to kind of meet new people that way. But I, I, I applaud what you're doing. And I think many people are with you. It can be tricky to meet new people. I love that idea about getting together with friends and having each of them invite someone else. I love that idea. Yep. And and you go you could make it a make it meet new friends party or or we got so many great ho holidays coming around. You know, have it be either a Halloween theme or you could actually what I love and we do this at my house uh, around the fire pit is you could order online a book of questions. And you could make it kind of a, you know, a gratitude party and say, okay, everybody, let's come. Everyone, you know, bring a drink and, and we're going to all sit around and I got this great book and, and, and it's, it's thought provoking questions. So it gets people talking and you get to know them better. And that may be a good uh, technique also to use for your get together. Yes, I love that idea. But now, of course, we have to meet outdoors because of the pandemic. And <laughs> well, this makes it difficult. that is true. So everybody bring their best <laughs> right. sweater or jacket. But, you know, I, I have a feeling right. where there's a will, there's a way and you will find the way. OK, but I so yeah. appreciate you calling in because it was a really, really good question that I, even I have been there. So I understand. Mm hmm. Well, thank you so much for that advice, and I will take you up on that, definitely. Wonderful. You just keep smiling. I can feel it through the phone here, and uh, <laughs> and uh, have a great day. Thank you. And you as well. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Love that she asked that question, because today we're talking about finding your purpose, but I will tell you what, there are many things that can sabotage one from having that creative ability to find their purpose. And one of the, those is loneliness. When you're feeling lonely, when you're feeling hopeless, when you're feeling, you know, unsupported, 
sometimes that doesn't that doesn't give you the ability to kind of have that wind beneath your wings to really soar and find your way. So I'm so glad she touched on that. Now I want to make sure everybody stays with us. We have Lori Marini coming up and she's going to be talking about her battle with breast cancer. But she didn't she didn't just roll over and say, cancer, you take your have your way with me, right? She was determined to get her life back on track, find her purpose, and she did, and you can too. So I am Nancy Scaleri, this is the Living Full Out Show. Ponder over this show. What is it that you'd like to do in your life? Maybe what's been holding you back? Let's turn a new page and go for it. Today is the day that you are living your life full out. We'll be back. This is fun. I didn't think I like kayaking. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. But I think it's time to head back in. Okay. Can we come back? Sure. Tomorrow? <laughs> Let's check with Mom. Hey, be careful getting out of the boat. It's a kayak, Dad. <laughs> I'm going to return the kayak. Just make sure you have everything. Yep. Can we walk home? Yeah, how about a Taxi! 233 North Maple, please. It's a short fare from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a neighborhood park or green space near you. Also, find fun activities to do like boating and biking or camping and hiking. Plus much more. It's all right in your naturehood. Best day ever. A public service announcement brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. Don't you wish that getting your child to eat right, move more, and spend less time in front of a screen could be as easy as pushing a button? It might not be that simple, but you do have more power than you know. And you can maximize that power with proven strategies, tips, and tools from the National Institutes of Health's We Can, or Ways to Enhance Children's Activity and Nutrition program. We Can offers all kinds of resources, including fun recipes and activities the family can do together to show you the way to live a healthier lifestyle. We're not saying it's easy. We are saying that it can be done. Take the first step today. Call 1-866-359-3226 for a free We Can Parents Handbook. And be sure to visit the We Can website at wecan.nhlbi.nih.gov for free information, too. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Today, my new dad and I shot off a rocket in the park. Today, my new son and I failed to shoot off a rocket. He knew exactly what to do. I had no clue what I was doing. We set up the rocket. We set up the rocket. Hit ignition. Hit ignition. And then... And then nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes I laugh when I'm frustrated. Then out of nowhere, the rocket launched into the air. The rocket did get into the air. I've never seen anything fly so high. And then crashed into a kite. Look out! Look out! And then the pond. I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget that day, even if I tried. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. When I was little, I didn't talk for a long time. I liked things to always be the same. Anything new or different would scare and upset me. I was very sensitive to lights and sounds. It was almost like I had bigger eyes and ears than everyone else. So I built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. I didn't like looking people in the eye. It made me feel uncomfortable. I'd throw big tantrums over little things like when my socks didn't match. Sometimes I'd do the same things over and over. Until one day, I found out I had autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I learned how to live with it better. You can see signs of autism in children as young as 18 months. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. 
You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. With Nancy's expertise, you'll learn how to embrace your potential and strive for success. If you have a question or need further support, send us an email at connect at livingfullout.com. Now, here's Nancy. Welcome back. I'm Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about finding your purpose. And sometimes we have to go through the weeds, go through the fire to find our purpose. I know I did. I mean, going legally blind has not been a piece of cake by any stretch, um, but it's led me to be here with you. And I, I'm in awe and proud of that with every breath I take, literally, on the show. I, I, I love being here with the community. And I know for many of our inspirational guests, what they go through, although the stress and the battle and the warrior aspect of it, uh, they come out the other end with a better version of themselves, a, a new spin on life, a new chapter of life. And a lot of times that does come with finding their purpose. And Lori Marini, our guest today, just captures all of that and more with having survived breast cancer. But it's not just about surviving. She manhandled breast cancer. <laughs> she said, this is how it's going down. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we uh, talk out her story. So I'd like to welcome Lori to the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Oh, so happy to be here with you. And, you know, before we get in to your story and all the breast cancer and all of that, we are talking today about finding one's purpose. And although breast cancer taught you a new purpose, a new version of yourself, you actually were living a really good life and a purposeful one at that. Before all of this happened, what was your career? What were you doing? So before all of that transpired. Um, I was a pathologist, or I still am a pathologist assistant um, who's worked in healthcare for 20 years. And my main purpose was to support the diagnosis of patient samples. Um, so I was really on the forefront of really making sure that people just um, were taken care of when they were in the hospital. So... It's rather ironic. I, I always ponder how the universe, God, how it all serves itself up, right? Because here you are in this career, helping people going through their own battle. And then at 41, you know, you went to, you missed your mammogram, which many people do, and you felt bad about it. And your doctor actually said, hey, good news, Lori. It's now 45. You got four more years. Don't worry about it. But what I'm curious about is what was going on, the dialogue in your mind? Because you didn't just let it go. You didn't just say, okay, next year. What was gnawing at you that made you want to get an appointment? Well, having been in the field that I've been in, you know, you can't kind of turn a blind eye to, you know, what stuff happened. You, you know, people get diseases. And so I knew what the guidelines were. I know why they're in place. And, you know, I kind of let it go. But at the same time, I just didn't feel right about it, especially because I was working very closely with metastatic breast cancer patients at the time. But the catalyst for me to go and set up that first appointment um, for my baseline mammogram was that I had a dream. I had a dream that I was just riddled with cancer. And this was after my appointment. And for some reason, I woke up, I was panicked, and I called up my bestie, and I was like, you have to, like, hold me to account. I have to go and schedule that mammogram. And in hindsight, I don't know why a mammogram is what first came to mind. It really could have been anything, but, you know, I really felt pulled to go and make sure that I did this test for myself. Well, and, and you did go and you did that test. And I think, you know, we all go into surgeries, signing paperwork, thinking the worst is never going to happen. We go to a mammogram thinking, okay, this is routine. I'm going to be in and out. But you actually got a call that same afternoon that you did your mammogram. And what did they tell you? That they needed me to go back for um, re-imaging. And when that happened, I didn't think anything of it because, you know, I'm very familiar with this imaging. I needed these images to perform my own job. And it's very common, especially if you have dense fibrous tissue, that you need another image. But so when, when I went there and I had another mammogram done, this time with a 3D contrast, I didn't think anything of it. And then they went and they did ultrasound on me. I didn't think anything of it until they were measuring my lymph nodes and they were on image 
65 in my armpit. And then I'm like, okay, hold on. You only do that when there's something going on. That's not part of the standard screening. So when that happened before anybody even said the words to me, you have cancer, I knew that I was going to be dealing with something. Well, and because you had all of this information based upon your career, you were able to kind of calculate every step and almost see it coming before they told you. But for many yeah. people, it, it, there's this, I'm dying. Uh, I, 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 I have to, you know, get my place, everything in order, right? I, I don't know what's going to happen. They, and they go to the worst place. But even mm-hmm. the worst place you can survive from, you went through it, right? Yeah. But how did you yeah. calm your nerves? How did you calm your stresses during that time? Because you, you knew it was bad. Yeah, I did. I did know it was bad. You know, as I was getting the imaging done, I remember looking at the colorful light that was above me. And I just said to myself, okay, you're about to go through this. It's not what you expected. But when we're done with this, what do you want? So I remember like writing my will in my head and then all the things that I wanted to change about my life, all the things that I've been putting off. You know, I had an amazing life to begin with because I believe like you create your life. You, you have a life by design. Like that's my mentality, my mindset. But at that moment, I'm like, okay, I still haven't done X, Y, and Z and I'm going to change this and I'm going to change that. And that I created a new vision for myself of once I am done with this, what is it going to look like? And that's really what I held on to. Well, and, and I think, Lori, without all that knowledge that you had, a lot of people are like, okay, do I take a first opinion? Do I get a second opinion, a third opinion? How fast do I react? Do I take both of my breasts off? What do I do? Mm-hmm. And, you know, how, do you, how does one make those decisions? You know, I think it's one of those things you have to really listen to, to your gut. You have to be your own advocate and you have to inform yourself. So for me, because I had already had the knowledge base of what I was dealing with, I knew before I even had a conversation, I even had my biopsies back. I'm like, I'm going for a bilateral mastectomy because I know I have, it's been proven time and time again, you have one shot. You have one time to get the surgery done right. Otherwise you're in repeated surgeries. So for me, I didn't want to have repeat surgeries. I was going to like, I wanted to be a one and done. So I, that's where I was standing. And it's one of those things that if you are not getting the information you need from your care team, then find another care team or keep asking questions. I think one of the things that is concerning for me is um, people don't ask questions or they're afraid to ask questions. They don't get clarification. And part of what happens too is that everything is so complicated now in the medical field that you know, the clinicians will use words that they just assume people are going to understand. And so, you know, it may not be a common conversation for you to have. So you really need to be your own advocate and you need to stand up and be like, I don't understand what you're saying to me and let them dumb it down for you. And you know what? I I actually think that is fantastic advice. And Lori, I want you to stay with us. We're going to go to a quick break, but everybody, Today we're talking about finding your purpose. Lori did, you did, you can. So I am Nancy Solari. Stay with us. It's all about living full out as we find our purpose. We'll be back. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. There are many sounds in your day-to-day life. There are sounds that wake you up. Sounds that make you smile. Sounds that energize you. And sounds that help you relax. But there are some sounds that can alert you to danger and can help save lives. Wireless emergency alerts, now on many mobile devices, use a unique sound and vibration to bring you information about severe weather events, amber alerts, or other emergencies in your area. With critical information from local sources you know and trust, you can be in the know, wherever you are. For more information, visit ready.gov alerts. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. 
Keyboard Cat, Hamilton the Pug, and Toast Meets World. These are some of the Internet's most beloved pets. With millions of YouTube views, shares, Instagram likes, followers, and fans across the globe. But what do all these amazing pets have in common? Their stories started in a shelter. Start your story. Adopt a dog or cat today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org to find a shelter or adoptable pets near you. Training that pet to play the keyboard? Well, <laughs> that's entirely up to you. Visit the shelterpetproject.org and hear more about Hamilton the Pug, Toast, and Keyboard Cat's amazing adoption stories. Start a story. Adopt a shelter or rescue pet today. Your perfect pet is just a click away at the shelterpetproject.org. A public service announcement brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. As an 18-year-old, I let my mistakes kind of take over my life. I was 0.5 credits away from completing high school, and I didn't do it. Ten years later, at age 28, Jackie finished her high school diploma. When I found out that I was pregnant, I know that I had to do something for myself if I wanted to make her a better person and provide a better life for her. My family never stopped pushing for me to be better because they knew what I could become and who I could become as a person. My support team is amazing. The educational director, my sister, and even my seven-year-old daughter has just been more than the support that I could ask for. But I've been given an opportunity, and I'm just thankful for it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. What if I could tell you that a full-blown wildfire was going to occur tomorrow right where you live? Tell you exactly which neighborhoods it would engulf and how fast it would do it. The first thing you would do is talk with your loved ones and make a plan today. It's true. I can't tell you a wildfire will strike tomorrow. But shouldn't you make a plan anyway? Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about finding your purpose. And sometimes to find that purpose, you have to make some really difficult decisions. You have to go through awkward moments, stressful ones. And our inspirational guest today, Lori Marini, has gone on through it and more. And I want to bring her back into the interview here because there's so much more to her story. So welcome, Lori. Oh, thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. And Lori, you truly are a warrior. But when I say a warrior, it's because you had to make tough decisions and like yesterday, <laughs> you had to make the decisions because from diagnosis to surgery, it was only about a two week period. And I, I know one of the questions that got proposed to you that felt way out of left field was, do you want to have children? Which yeah. probably seemed like, why are you asking me that? Can you share with us what they told you? Yeah, so um, it was a question that I never really thought about. Even with, you know, my role as a PA, unless you go through this process where you might have the potential of getting chemotherapy or radiation, um, it's really not something that you think of that your your ovaries and your eggs would be affected. So 
Um, at the same time that I was trying to figure out what procedure I was getting done, they were talking to me about, okay, well, do you want to start harvesting your eggs? Like, are you interested in having children? Um, because we need to do that even before you go to surgery. So it was something that really caught me off guard. And it's, you know, something that I, I make sure now, um, I share with other people to just like put it, that on their radar because I was really, I was really um, overwhelmed by the question, right? Up until this point, I haven't had children, but it was like you were taking the opportunity away from me and I didn't want you to do that. <laughs> so it was, it was a very difficult conversation for me. I can only imagine. And then that would have just been one difficult conversation all on its own. But then you also had to decide, you know, how the surgery was going to go, what that was going to yeah. look like. And did you yeah. want implants? You know, did, did mm -hmm. you want nipples? You know, I mean, mm -hmm. every detail involved. Can you share with us about that? Yeah. So I knew, I knew in theory what it meant to have a bilateral mastectomy, but once it's personal, <laughs> it's kind of like, oh, that's really going to happen to me. And for some reason, I was just attached to having my nipples. It was one of those things that I was telling my surgeon, can we please have it be nipple sparing? And they had to look at me and be like, look, you have four lesions on your left. One of them is over two centimeters, which automatically upstaged me. And, you know, based on the biopsies, I had lymphovascular invasion. So that means it, it may have spread other places to my body. And my surgeon said to me, he's like, look, you're going to go through all of this. And you're going to keep your nipples there. And like, do you really want to do that knowing that there's breast tissue in your nipples and you're setting yourself up for a reoccurrence? And when he made that statement to me, like it all became clear what I needed to do. And I had about a week and a half to decide, did I want implants? Did I not want implants? And I decided to go with them because I didn't want to regret it in the future. Like I knew how I felt now, how I was feeling now was like, you know what? I probably don't need them. I'm, I'm probably okay being flat, but it was the fear of the unknown of the future that had me actually make the opposite decision because I'm like, maybe one day when I'm in a cute little cocktail dress, I'm going to wish I had done it. So I, I opted to go for it, but it's really, you know, it's a life altering decision because now after um, my implant exchange, I had expanders where they make room for them and then they'll exchange out. Um, the, because my implants are underneath my muscle, they had to use the expanders and then they went in and they put the implants in. You know, I still have limited range of motion. I still have pain. I still have, you know, issues and I'm three years out and I'm still having, like, I never forget that they're there, you know? <laughs> I still have well, limited and, range of motion from them. And that's tough because, again, within a quick amount of time, you're trying to assess all of these major decisions. And, and you're right, you are now three years in, but even three years in, you recently made another big decision, and that was stay on medication or not. Can you share with yeah. us what you decided there? Yeah, so for me, I um, because of my age and how I presented that tamoxifen was going to be my um, treatment, my course of treatment. And for me, tamoxifen has been debilitating. You know, I have had, I've been diagnosed with adults at ADHD. I have severe anxiety. I um, have brain fog. I have, you know, trouble focusing. I, um, hot flashes, you know, um, a, I also find that I don't have the stamina I have. Like I, I always say it that my legs feel like tree trunks, um, that it, you know, it's, it's, you have to choose, right? Do you choose potentially having a reoccurrence and not having this medication? I could go the holistic route and hope that that helps me. Um, I could do a combination of both or I could do nothing. So I actually weaned myself off of the medication for two months and I did a genetic test where I, I did a hormone test where it showed my levels, my normal levels, no tamoxifen involved, what is my body doing? And my estrogen was through the roof. So after, you know, consider, con like consideration, careful consideration, I decided to go back on the medication, knowing what the symptoms were going to be. Um, because you know what? I want to live. I don't want to have to deal with a reoccurrence five years from now if I could help it. 
So I've decided to join forces and do some holistic therapies um, like ozone and high dose vitamin C and also stay on the tamoxifen and just really give myself the best course because to me, for me, that's being a warrior, right? Like I don't want to be a survivor. For me, a survivor is just somebody that goes with the wind. Like a warrior is somebody that's going to set themselves up to really take this battle on, you know, head well, first and, 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 and I'm give curious, it your best. Right. And I'm curious, so many people, whether it's cancer or another health condition or just depression, it could be depression, it could be anything, um, mm-hmm. they're just sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I'm sure yeah. you are even saying, okay, when will I get my strength back? Am I going to be on medication forever? You know, what did I ever yeah. do wrong in my life yeah. to get this, right? I'm sure, you know, how do you digest those questions? Because many of our audience have those. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things that it's normal. Like, there's a voice in the back of my head that with every ache and pain and every new development that happens in my body, right, I'm like, oh, my God, it's back. Oh, my God, right? Like, I'm going to, I have cancer again. I'm going to, I know it. Like, it's, but, you know, I also choose not to live there. I know that living there will be detrimental because of the fact that I'm not living in the now. You know, I may get hit by a bus tomorrow and I might not be here. So today is about living for right now. And whatever mm-hmm. happens in my future is just going to happen. And I'll handle it when I get there. So for me, I, I recognize my conversation. I'm like, hey, there you are again. Yes, thank you so much for that. I assess the whether or not it's just me being, you know, um, afraid. Is this fear or if it's a legitimate concern? And then I just move from there. If it's something that I'm concerned about, I go and I get seen. And if it's m- one of my fears of reoccurrence, then... I just, I do a lot of journaling. I do a lot of meditation. Um, you know, I, I find a way to just, and I give myself grace, right? Like, I'm like, okay, you're human. It's human to be afraid, but you need to keep pushing forward and you need to live for today because that's all we really have. And if that means taking life one second at a time, then, then that's what you do for that day. Well, and I'm curious, you know, this is the living full out show and, and you're mm-hmm. a great example of that, despite all that you're dealing with, even still three, three years later, you're still dealing with it. And how do you square the circle of the why me, you know, the, the, why did this happen? Cause we're talking today about finding your purpose. So it's yeah. kind of this casserole that's happening in your life of finding your purpose, which I know is coaching today. And then going mm-hmm. through the cancer and still dealing with it yet mm-hmm. wanting to live full out. Cause that's who you were before all this happened. You know, I'm a believer that the universe puts you exactly where you need to be. And I'm clear that I was just so hard headed that I needed something dramatic to shift my life in the direction that I needed to go in. I I'm so clear that, you know, this, This happened in order for me to truly be a stand for people, to support people, and just really be, you know, I'm a helper. I am, I've been put on this earth to be a person that will support people in their time of need and to get others to see, like, that life is now, life is happening to you at this moment. Like, let's get you, let's get you in the game, let's get you out of the stands, and let's, like, have you living your life and doing all the things that you've been putting off for, oh, we'll get to that eventually. Okay. Um, and with, yeah, and without without the adversity that I have gone through, it, it was the po- push that I needed. Like when I got diagnosed with the with all the knowledge I had in my head, I was so completely overwhelmed. And that overwhelm made me realize like, I have to be of help because if I feel this way, how is anybody else dealing with what they're dealing with? Well, and that's why I feel, you know, support groups are important, you know, even in the waiting room, striking up a conversation with someone, right? Because yeah. everyone in that waiting room has the, has their own journey with it, but they're all yeah. there for a reason. It's not like they just have extra time and they wanted to stop by and say hi to a doctor, right? Um, Agreed. You know, Lori, you are just, like I said, a great example of, of what it means to live full out. And thank you for being so honest and vulnerable and sharing your story and we're just gonna keep sending you positive wishes to keep that recovery going oh thank you so much 
this was truly an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. And for everybody listening, that, I mean, Lori went through breast cancer. I've gone through blindness. I know you've gone through something too. And we would really enjoy hearing from you. And perhaps you can come on as a guest and just like Lori, be a stand and support for other people and share your story. So reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com. Make sure to give us your contact information. Let us know what you went through. And if you are open to being on the show, we'd love to have you. Again, that's connect at livingfullout.com. Tough decisions, right, in life that we have to make. But we also have to keep the faith and know that we can get through the fire. We can get to the light. And we can have a great life. That's what it means to live full out. So stay with us. I'm Nancy Solari. This is the Living Full Out Show. And we'll be right back after this break. Well, Jason, I've got to tell you, you're pretty much everything this company is looking for in an entry-level candidate. Great. Your resume isn't quite what we're used to, but you've got a fantastic work ethic. Thank you. And I'm impressed by how you carry yourself. So, should we talk about the job? Uh, What? The job? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have no way of recruiting or even meeting you. This interview didn't happen. It may sound ridiculous, and that's because it kind of is. There's a huge pool of talent your company is missing out on. Meet the grads of life. Who are they? Talent worth knowing about. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or even mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. Man, we really could have used him. Don't miss out on a resource many innovative companies have already discovered. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. The following message is about Medicaid and CHIP, free or low-cost health coverage for kids and teens. Enrollment is open year-round. Hey, voice lady, give me the mic. Um, okay. Hey, DJ, let's switch up the music. That's better. So listen up, moms and dads out there. There are these programs called Medicaid and CHIP. They offer free or low-cost health coverage for kids. Things like doctor and dentist visits, prescriptions, and shots are covered. All the stuff that keeps kids like me healthy and in charge. So, as you can tell, a covered kid is a confident kid. And it means confident parents, too. To learn more about affordable health coverage for your family, visit healthcare.gov or call 1-877-KIDS-NOW. That's 1-877-543-7669. Yep, you could do something big for your family today because enrollment is open year-round. This has been a message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And Sophia. They're going to jump out of trees. You can't stop them. They'll go down the slide head first. They'll make parachutes out of sheets. They'll balance on things that are impossible to balance on, like the back of a couch or a windowsill or a scooter seat. They'll run with sharp objects. They'll run into walls. They'll climb things that won't hold their weight. They'll put their fingers in places where they could get smashed. They'll drive their tricycles down steep hills. They'll bounce balls off their faces. They'll step on each other. They'll jump on each other. They'll invent whole new ways to put themselves in jeopardy. But one of the most dangerous things kids will do happens while they're sitting perfectly still. Kids who ride in a car without a booster seat are much more likely to suffer serious or fatal injury during a crash than kids in boosters. But amazingly, 80% of all kids who need them aren't in them. After a toddler seat and until they're four foot nine, boost your kids and don't let them down. Go to boosterseat.gov to learn more about the importance of boosters. A message from the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Hey, Nick Cannon here. So we all know we've got a lot of talent in America. But unfortunately, there's something else we've got way too much of. Childhood hunger. 17 million kids struggle with it in this country. That's why the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks gather surplus food to give hope to hungry kids and their families. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. A message from Feeding America and the Ad Council. We are your pets, and this song's dedicated to those people who don't have health insurance yet. Enroll, we say, we want you to be okay. Enroll, we say, take care, people, for goodness sake. Health insurance is now affordable. 
covers prescriptions, hospitalizations, and preventive care. Visit GetCoveredAmerica.org to learn more. And take care, people. Brought to you by Get Covered America and the Ad Council. When it comes to finding your purpose, remember that the answer is always inside you. Believe it or not, it's there. It may be a childhood dream you had. It may be a skill or talent that you're really good at. But you just got to turn that fire up, turn up that light, and let it shine so you can live your life full out. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. Nancy is here as a guide to show you how to rise above obstacles and savor each moment. If you have a question, call in live at 800-333-0001. That's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Welcome back. I'm Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we've been talking about finding your purpose. And I know when we're in overwhelm, when we have the to-do list that goes on and on and on and on, it's hard to be creative and to be inspired. So I want to invite all of you to go to our website, livingfullout.com. Right there on the homepage, we actually have an 80 tips to bring balance into your life. And the reason why I'm suggesting you go there, it's free, is just because if you can apply a handful of those 80 tips weekly, monthly, whatever you can do, it will ease the tension. It'll help kind of d- diminish the stresses that you're feeling. Because to be purposeful, to be on point, to be ready for your big moment, right? You got you got to let that stress go, the anxieties. And it's, you know, how do you do that? Well, the 80 tips will definitely help you. So again, it's free. Go to livingfullout.com uh, to grab that. And I'm getting word from our producer that we do have a listener on the line. We'll go say hello to them. Hi, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi, um, my name is Athea, and I just have a quick question for you today. Yes, how can I help you? Um, so my question is, um, the most important thing for me usually is to be um, as kind and as respectful as I possibly can be. But sometimes I find it difficult to do this when others around me don't respect my beliefs and my values. Um, So my question is, how do I maintain my values and rise above when faced with individuals such as these? That is actually a great question. And I can feel that it's actually one that you've been pondering for a while. And I do believe Mm -hmm. you sound like a really nice person. But sometimes there's a fine line between being nice and standing up for yourself. And I think when it comes to maturing in life, it just has to be about letting know, you know, knowing when to let go of certain relationships that no longer serve us, and also knowing when to stand up and say, "Hey, that's not right." And it doesn't have to be argumentative; it's more educational. So let me talk about both. Okay, I've said this before on the show, but I want to say it again: that advice was given to me one time, resonated with me big time, that people stay in our lives sometimes for three reasons. Either number one, they're in our life for a reason, they're in our life for a season, or they're in our life forever. If there is somebody that is combative, they don't support you, they want to debate you, that's on them. That's a lot of their chitter chatter. That's noise as far as I'm concerned, Mm -hmm. right? If whatever they say lands on you and it does not inspire you, it makes you feel small. It makes you question decisions you're making, question your life. That may be a relationship that was only there for a season or a reason. And, and although it's a big decision to let it go, I think the, when you let it go, you're going to feel a sense of freedom. And then the mm-hmm. other thing, too, is when it comes to standing up for yourself, it's actually exciting. It is exciting to see that confidence rise inside of you and say, you know, I, I stand for this. Maybe it's a political belief. You know, I am a woman of faith or, or not, you know, and, and, and I'm that, that's who I am in my inner core. You know, I believe in this. To have a stance in life is a good thing. Now, as you put your voice out there is, you know, you don't want to make people wrong. You invite people to have their opinion. But it's really mm. good to know who you are at the core. 
And again, for those who don't like it, you can let them go. And every time and every you let go of one friendship, you now are able to accept applications for new ones. And I have a feeling that you've got <laughs> a lot of applications backing up for you, right? Do you see that? Yeah, that was um, awesome. Thanks so much for your help. You're welcome. Have a great day. Thank you for calling in. You too. And Thanks. for everybody listening today, it is all about finding your purpose. I, actually, purpose is one of our elements of Living Full Out right there on our website. We stand for it. We stand beside it. And we want you to have it. So if you need support, reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com. Make sure whether it's Alexa, the App Store, or our website, just look for Living Full Out Radio and, and hear the show again or other shows because we have so many inspirational guests just like Lori Marini will serve to inspire and our entire living full out family thanks you for listening we got rich and irish and kale and caleb and you know the thing is i really want you to not feel the pressure of purpose having to be a big 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 mountain a huge achievement purpose can just be eating well in a week it can be going to the gym a couple times a week you know purpose is just advancing yourself forward physically mentally spiritually. You know, that is what it means to live full out. So turn a new page in your novel. Let's get you out there moving, shaking, enjoying life. Smile. Always smile. I promise you smiles lead to good things and you'll always feel it resonate to your body. Most of all, I believe in you so much. Can't wait to see you on the next show. Here's to you living your life full out. See you soon. Thank you for listening to the Living Full Out Show with Nancy Soleri. To learn more about this program, visit livingfullout.com for the latest episodes. Connect with the Living Full Out community by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you have an inspirational story you want to share, email us at connect at livingfullout.com. Here's to you, Living Full Out.